somebody come up with the idea about going to Ibiza for the day. Blackpool got fuck all to play for and the busy cunts turned up like fucking PSG. <laughs> it's 10 games left. You said, if you win and get promoted, I'll double your bonus. Yeah. But I'll bring it to your cash. I thought, I've done nothing. I've literally done nothing. I've literally been sat in there and the man just punched me in my face. <laughs> and he's rolling around. The <laughs> <laughs> but all we can see is his bowl selector. <laughs> The boys were just trying to smash him because he was so far off it. I, like, I swear, damn, man thought he was Coutinho. Never played football at any type of level. How the fuck are you going to come tell me or tell any of these how to play football? It was quiet in there. And I'd be like, nah, fuck like, this. I'm about to spice this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, state mate. <laughs> yeah. Gentlemen, we good? Very well. West Station. West Station. What's that? Oh, is that a jumper? Yeah, you like it? Yeah, it's all right, actually, for well, you. I look good, don't I? Motor Parts approved dealer. Yeah. Have you got a sponsor? <laughs> you've, got a, you've got your own sponsor, haven't you, you fucker? It's, uh, if anybody wants uh, any... You need a There's a place to go. If anybody needs a new timing belt in Bolton, <laughs> just get fucking big in a shout. Uh, is everything all right at home? Yeah, yeah, all right. Why? Because we had last week, Rose kick, like, taking the piss out of me and him, keeping my husband's name out of his mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. But my husband has started a football podcast with his friends and thinks he is now a celebrity. Right, yeah. It's awful. I cringe every time. You're the only one that's married in this society. <laughs> <laughs> She's not happy. <laughs> I saw that tweet, you know. I saw it. I showed she's it even to it. Rose. She's she's even in tears, yeah. laughing. <laughs> Funny enough, that tweet, they've got no followers and they're only following under the cosh. <laughs> <laughs> Something that could be a bit of a suspect account. Uh, uh, yeah, probably. Probably. Are you getting probably, much. You are a celebrity, though, Chris. Are you, getting, oh. are you getting much traction around the streets of Bolton? That's the one from under the cosh. And so, um, what happened the other day, actually? What was the Oldham game? Remember the Oldham one? When you were just queuing for a pie? Yeah. <laughs> Did he say, where's, where's the other knacker? Where's that, where's that bald little fucker? That was it. <laughs> uh, he went, yeah, because I'd be at him front and he went, oh, it's like for a cost there. And then he went, where's that bald fucker? <laughs> and you were stood in front of him. <laughs> you got his cock up your ass and all, and he went, that, that tight in the gill. So it, it, was, it was snug. Literally, like, it... it Within, when you say within a shot, it was literally within about 12 inches of your ear, weren't it? Yeah. Is that yeah. bald little fucker? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we hope everyone's well. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm all right. Mark Who? Davies, part two. Who? I said Mark Davies. Yeah, you said Mark. <laughs> Craig <laughs> Davies, part two. Fucking hell, leave that in, by the way. <laughs> leave that in. We're back in Sutton Caulfield, aren't we? Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely little venue. Grafting again on a Friday, mm. setting off at the crack of dawn. Back oh. shift. Miss the traffic or... It's what we do though, lads, isn't it? It is. Why, it is. And why do we do it? Why we're do we do it? Because we love it. We don't know how well episode one did. No. Because we haven't released it yet. Yeah. But so it's going to be a good one, isn't it? You'll have been, I tell you what, you'll have been to Turkey. So yeah. you'll be, you'll be, next episode, you'll be sat in a nice leather jacket. Yeah, I'll go to Turkey in the morning. Shirt, smoking shisha. Hopefully, my holiday got cancelled and I had books from it. Oh, two shit, minutes notice. Yeah. So I'll go to Turkey now. So but, I'll have, my new, I'll have my, new, my new throw, fresh set of teeth. For us, I'll have a new pair of tits. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be tanned. I quite like an old one. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, uh, do you know, like, when we're obviously at away and all that sort of stuff do you know you always take yourself away from us don't you do you do the same with family yeah so you've had enough at family uh, 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 Juno uh, Oscar you do me tits in Rose look after the kids I'm off no I usually just say I'm nipping shop and then I'll come back a couple of hours later <laughs> pissed <laughs> yeah. uh, with a know, new friend uh, uh, <laughs> Frank <laughs> Frank Frank is <laughs> Jester <laughs> I play with uh, Lee Hughes, right? And uh, he used to go to Mexico every every year with his missus and, and kids. And he, he always used to have two days on his own. So he'd say, right, I'm having me two days. What, can he just put, is that like his trunk card? He can just put I'm having me whenever? two days. So he'd leave uh, uh, the Monday morning, 
and the next time she'd see him would be Wednesday morning. I'd just go AWOL for what, two just days. Just go to another hotel and... I don't, well, I don't know if he stayed do, out or there. not or what, but he, he said, I'm, I always give me send two days to myself. My ex-missus did that, but she never told us. <laughs> she never come back. <laughs> she just disappeared for two days. <laughs> and it's been... With a smile on her face. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been three and a half years. <laughs> That's some understanding from the wife, that innit? Go mm. on, then you have your two days yeah. blast. Yeah. Check out. Check out. We had um, Jamie Proctor last week, and we've got another Patreon coming up next week. If you're not involved in the Patreon, it's a fantastic way of just supporting the podcast, innit? Well, I've had a look through the list, right? And I'm just going to mention five names Ray Parler, <sighs> Carlton Palmer, Mark Crossley, part two. Struggling. I'm going to mention three names. <laughs> Neil Ruddock, Neil Ruddock, yeah, Danny one. Graham, Huckabee. Yeah, that's six, but we'll, eh, we're always giving more, aren't we? Exactly, we're, we're changing lives, aren't we? <laughs> they're, they're just, that's just six of the episodes that you can listen to on the Ian page. Holloway. Holloway. Ian Holloway. Ian Holloway. I forgot about... I tell Ian. you what, I'm thinking about signing up myself. <laughs> <laughs> show, show me the fucking sign-up sheet. <laughs> but Bonus yeah, if you don't stuff. know about the Patreon, we've got ex, two extra episodes a month, and it's what, two pound... Just over two pound, and then five pound if you want the bonus regular episodes twenty four hours earlier. We've got bonus content, and we've got the drawer as well. We do a drawer every now and again. But to be fair, I think people do know about the the Patreon. I think they've just been tight bastards now. Yeah. They? Well, some people might not. Thing is, today is uh, April Fool's Day, and obviously, I'm sure a lot of you have seen John's tweet. Whoa, from, whoa, whoa, um, whoa, whoa! whoa. <coughs> you need to have a look on the internet to see if that one me who did that. <laughs> I picked him up. Junction 38, the first thing he said was, I forgot I tweeted exactly the same last year. <laughs> was it, I got it cut out and I, and I was seeing April Fool stuff and I said to him, fucking I remember when uh, when Parky did that tweet last year. Fuck's sake. And then we sat having some breakfast and he just went, he went silent, he looked up, he went, he's done it again. <laughs> Right, I'm having a look onto it. <laughs> Somebody messaged saying, oh, to be fair, lads, I thought you'd quit a while ago, <laughs> considering the amount of Patreon episodes you're forgetting to release. And it was like a knife to the heart. Right, let me just have a look on Twitter here. Right, I'm t- uh, you, know this, the, you know this social media world? Apparently it's all about traction. They say it's all about traction. It's not good in the way, is it? Uh, all what, was it what was the end bit? We, de- we deeply sorry. We deeply sorry. <laughs> yeah, we are, won't we? We would be. <laughs> so it's hard. You're in a Polish accent. So it's hard. <laughs> we deeply sorry. 144 messages, 29 retweets, 256 likes. 100 of their messages has given us abuse, saying you're not funny, lads. It's all about traction. You did this lads. last year, <laughs> dickhead. It's all about traction. <laughs> all about so, traction. So, I've got us some traction. Yeah, I, I genuinely, genuinely forgot I'd done it last year. <laughs> There's always a telltale. So it's, you get the dots in between. Instead of full stops, you use multiple right, full yep. stops yep. and the emojis. Is so look out for them. There's no emojis on this yeah. one. No. I was trying to throw for it, but I forgot about the dots. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that I'm you saying really it on me. So on the grammar as John well. John has now been prohibited from the, uh, getting your Twitter privileges revoked again. That... That another twelve month ban. He's only first day back. That, that, he's done it again. That no, he is, came on to promote his after dinner. That oh, is yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. That is fat. Somebody say after dinner. <laughs> if anybody wants to book us for an after dinner, then please do get in touch. Uh, I'm one of the cheapest on the circuit. What are you going to get? Eh? <laughs> you right, get? I am. I'm going to have ten minutes out of this bastard. Cheapest on the circuit. You get what you pay for. That's why. <laughs> Order. Oh, Cut that bit. Cut that bit. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I genuinely had forgot I'd done it last year. I, was, I, was, I thought I, I fucking pulled a blinder here. Anyway, we we deeply sorry for John's tweet. <laughs> we'll try harder next year. <laughs> I'm have to think of something new, aren't I? Oh, Tell you what I'm going to do. Tell you what I'll do next year. This will fuck us. This will fuck you. I'm going to say, just let you know, Patreon scrapped. They're all free. <laughs> eh? You'd be fucking. You have something to fucking moan about there, wouldn't you? <laughs> eh? You set of twats. Uh, well, should we get him out then? Get him in, eyes. Eagerly waiting. He's still sat there. Craig Davies. So did uh, did Shez send you on your way? Handshake and well done. You've done done what you said. Said getting well. that moved. Getting that move. Yeah, like literally. Um, they offered me a new contract, but. 
I was always going to go, do you know what I mean? Like, and he was cool with that. He knew what I wanted to do. Um, I obviously spoke to him at the beginning of the season about it and we spoke about it through the season. But um, yeah, like obviously I played a big part in the promotion. Do you know what I mean? Massive part. Yeah, like his first promotion. Put that team on my back and then got them off. <laughs> <laughs> he owes me. He owes me. <laughs> Funny enough, he said same about. He said same about you. I know. I seen it. <laughs> I got you. Fucking, I got you. Your tattoos <laughs> and your fucking Range Rover. Nah, like he, he, like he, um, he was cool with it. He was cool. Like obviously, I think I'd done a good job for him, and it, oh. it helped me massively. So, it was one of them. Like, he was happy for me to to go on. Like, it's not like I was going to a rival team or somewhere yeah, yeah. that he felt like was better. Like. But was, like a mutual respect there, you've done you've done well, you yeah, deserve your move. Yeah, like kinda. So I ended up obviously we got promoted from League Two, but I ended up going to the champ to Barnsley, you know, and they was going up to League One, he was happy with that, I was happy that I was going to the championship. So yeah. it worked out well for all of us, do you know what I mean? And like I said, when I look back on my football career, that year was a special year, do you know what I mean? Some special people. Did you have a, a couple of options? at the end of that year at Barnsley? It was the January, so I had a couple, like, to be fair, like, there was, like, there was interest at the time from from Wolves, but I didn't want to really want to go back to Wolves at the time. N not anything about the club, but obviously I'd been there before. I wanted to be away, do you know what I mean? I wanted to be away from, like, kind of, like, the area. I just wanted to concentrate on my, on my football. Um, Palace and Bolton. Um, so they one place to go, in. I wanted to go to Bolton. Um... Did free was it Friedman at Palace because he went from Palace so to Bolton? It was mad because they tried to, they wanted to sign me in the summer um, when Dougie was the yeah. manager at Palace. They didn't want to pay the bit of extra money, so he ended up going to Bolton. And then when he went to Bolton, he's just been like, "Oh, I've, I've been doing well, quite well at the time." He's just like, "No, I want to sign him." So I knew kind of like he wanted to go there. And then I went to Bolton. I was in the training ground, and then. Um, <laughs> Palace wanted me to go there, literally, but I'm in the training ground at Bolton. They're like, nah, tell him to walk out. Like, we'll give him more money. Like, but obviously the cost- You're not of, signed? Nah, so I'm literally, I've literally just met Dougie. Like, literally. I don't even think Dougie knows this, to be fair, but I've literally just met Dougie and they're like, they've rang my agent and they're like, I think they wanted DJ Campbell. And the DJ Campbell thing was going to cost him too much. And um, they turn around and they're like, listen, we'll, we'll give him like, he's like, he's going to sign for Bolton now. Like, we're here. And he's like, well, what they give, what they offering him. My agent's told him and he's like, all right, give me a minute, I'll call you back. Call me back about five minutes later. He's like, we'll give him this. My agent's just like, nah, like, and he's like, well, what will it take for him to walk out now? And my agent's just like, I don't know. He's like, I'll call you back in a second. And my agent's like, what's it gonna take for you to walk out? And you know what it's like, that's that's a bad thing to do. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, the thing is, when he talks, you, though, correct? Yeah. yeah, but do you know what? The funny thing is, if it was round the corner, yeah, possibly I might've walked, but it's a four hour train ride, yeah? By the time I get to Manchester Piccadilly, jump on the train, anything could happen. That DJ Campbell thing could happen. It wasn't the deadline day or anything, was it? No, so but I'm just saying like, that could that could happen. Do yeah. I want to be a greedy cunt? Or just want to get more than I've ever got and a massive opportunity at a football club that's just come down from the premiership? Do you know what I mean? Like, I think to myself, I thought to myself at the time, like, I'm not, I'm not going to be that greedy. I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity. Do you know was what it, I mean? Was there much difference? A little bit, yeah. Like at the time, and obviously if they'd gone up, which they did go up, which oh, fucking, no. oh. which killed me. <laughs> but at the time, crazy, like, crazy, the, crazy. the funny, the funny thing is, yeah, we ended up, we lost, missed out on that. So when I signed for Bolton, I think we was 18th, and we ended up finishing seventh that season. Yeah. On goal difference, we played Blackpool on the last day of the of the season. Blackpool got fuck all to play for, and the busy cunts turned up like fucking PSG. <laughs> Like, like, like Tom like, Ince, Matt fucking Phillips, a fucking Neymar and Mbappe, yeah, and causing absolute fucking they turned carnage. Up like the Invincibles, mate. They turned the fuck up, and I'm thinking, you busy fucking bastards, <laughs> you busy fucking bastards. <laughs> like they was going on nuts. Like the first 20 minutes, I knew we was in trouble. There's about 29,000 people there, and like. It's, it's expected to be a party and they went 2-0 up and it was not a party. We managed to drag it back. Chris Eagle scored and then I scored about two minutes before half time, two or three minutes before half time. But half time just come at the wrong time. Do you know what I mean? If we'd, if we'd had another going. 10 minutes, we'd have fucking, we'd have, we'd have beat them. We'd got over the line. We'd have, we'd got that third goal. 
second half was just cagey. You end up drawing 2-2 two -two and missed out on goal difference. And then fucking Palace won the playoffs. But we, we I, I'm sure, I, I'm sure we'd have beat Palace if we'd have got into the playoff finals. I felt like we had the, we had the better of them. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, man, it, it, it was a killer. But I made that decision. And, and, and to be fair, I don't regret that decision because... I went to Bolton and I fucking, it changed like everything, like changed my life, man. Like, obviously like- Does that to you? The, I loved <laughs> I loved the area, do you know what I mean? I moved to the area, I lived there, just met some unbelievable people. Some of the people I met there, like honestly, they'll stay with me for life. And in all honesty, it's probably the best dressing room I've ever been in in my whole mm -hmm. career. Like literally when I think about, if somebody turns around to me and like, name one dressing room that you've been in, that's the one, like that is the fucking one. The characters that were in that dressing room. They're priceless, man. <laughs> they are fucking... Who's, who's top boy? There's a few, man, to be fair. You had, like, Chris Eagles, fucking mad, man. Like, legend. Like, Mark Davis, Dave Wheater. A couple of the younger boys, like, Rob Layton. A couple of the senior ones, like, Zach Knight. Great guy, took me under his wing, showed me a lot. Like, just Stuart Holden. Just, just some just some ledge people in there, do you know what I mean? And, like... The thing I loved the most about that place was like, when we'd go out, like we'd, we wouldn't just go out like, I can't even forget, I can't forget Lana's. <laughs> It'd be fuming. <laughs> <laughs> fucking weird, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Like, like Lana's as well and, and, and Jay Spear in like, just ledge guys. Like, but when like we'd do something, there wouldn't just be like three or four of us, there'd be like 10 of us. You know, if we was going somewhere, it, like it was a proper like, it was like a fucking, it was like a gang, do you know what I mean? <laughs> We'd go out and literally the place was, I just loved it. Like the people that I met there, just like, le like legendary. The only thing is obviously we didn't manage to get pushed back up the league, do you know what I mean? To where obviously the, the club ended up financially over the years suffering and, and, and sliding down the league. But hopefully they, they get back to where they should be, do you know what I mean? Because it's an amazing place, man. Did you get on with Friedman? It was funny because when I first went there, I met him and he was a different type of character. And probably at the time I was probably a little bit still growing up, even though I was probably like 26 at the time. He was, he's very intense. And I feel like Dougie was before his time, like as football's gone on like five years, it's like he knew like the way full up foot football was, sorry, developing. And his ideas have come into place after but at the time there was new. So he was like, what the fuck's this type thing? Yeah. If you get what I mean, do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, Especially with stubborn footballers. Like him? Well, well with, with stubborn oh, yeah, footballers, yeah. Well, I do it like this and this is how I like to do it. Yeah, but like it, everything, like honestly, like when I went there, like obviously it's the, it's the best opportunity I've had. So I'm like, I'm buying into everything. Do you know what I mean that he's doing? So I've gone there and I've been injured. I hurt myself on New Year's day. So well, when they signed me, I was injured. So I was injured for not for too long, only for about two or three weeks. But he just like this, and you, you're too heavy. Like you, like you're ninety, you're ninety five kilograms, ninety six kilograms. I want you at ninety one. Steak bakes. Yeah, not not, <laughs> not full steak bakes. Half steak bakes. <laughs> but just, but that straight away that'd fuck me off. No, but I know what you're saying. You've signed me at ninety five. Fuck, yeah. I'm ninety five, ninety six. Fuck you. Yeah, I know. I know what you say. But then I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself, I'm being given an opportunity now. I've never been given. I know, but I, don't, I, th I think you've been a bit harsh on yourself there. I think you've earned that opportunity. I don't think you've been given it. You've yeah, earned that opportunity. There's nothing wrong with the manager trying to make you a better player by saying, do you know what? You, you're good, but if you lo lose a bit, you're but going to be even better. That, that's the thing. At the time, he turned around to me and he said this. And I was like, listen, I'm on board. I, I, I've come here. I want to do well. So at first, I started trimming down. Like they would be like, don't go in the gym too much. Don't go in the gym too much. So they just kind of stopped me going in the gym and I'd always be in the gym at football. Do you know what I mean? I like always doing something. So I stopped doing that and I got fit and sharp and it started off really well. Like when I started playing, like I felt like I started doing really well. But then it was like, I lost something for myself where you, what you're referring to, where I started, you signed me to do this. Yeah. But now I'm trying to play a little bit different to where it's taken a little bit from me and I'm not performing as well. Romelu Lukaku right now. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. They're not playing to his strengths either. Exactly. Like they're trying to, they're trying to do certain things and it's not him. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of like, obviously not to the Lukaku level, but that's kind of what happened to me. Like and he wanted me to kind of play how he played, not, you know, peeling off the man, etc. And it didn't work for me. That wasn't me. Mm. That wasn't my my game. And I tried to do that. 
And at first, me and him got on really well. But then it got to a point where me and him, I, I'd say that I started to like, be like, oh, this guy's a bit of an idiot, do you know what I'm saying? I don't like him, do you know what I mean? And was I it because like, you started realising that what he was doing No, there was, there, was a, there was a few things, because at first when I come in, he was like, I love the way you've just like come into the place. Like I went into the place, I'm not joking. I went into the dressing room and nobody to speak. I'm not joking, I went there and nobody to speak. I've come from the Barnsley dressing room. I come in there and people are coming in and I'm shouting steak bake at them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> coming up the shower, I'm abusing them for their body. People are like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? People are coming in and they're not like, they're not really speaking. But one thing that they did do, which was, I, I, I always believed this after, they'd come in every morning and everybody would shake hands. So as soon as you come in, if you was free with there, I'd come in, I'd be like, morning, morning, morning. I was mad. Like that to me is massive. Do you know what I mean? Because I'd never done that before at a football club. I'd come in and say hello, but I wouldn't, you know, it go around. It, it's a good respect level, I think. Was that from the manager that? Yeah. So Dougie brought that in. And I, I, I always thought like, when I went to other football clubs then, I would, I'd go to there and I'd be like, morning, morning. I'd go around to each player, regardless whether it's that, whether it's a shake of the hand, whatever, do you know what I'm saying? To embrace them. And I always loved that. But it was quiet in there. And I'd be like, nah, like, fuck this. I'm about to spice this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stay, <mate. laughs> When people are like, I'd, I'd, I'd start like, when people are walking across the, like I said, with towels around them and that, I'd be like, oh, you're a little bit heavy around there, big guy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And like, just start like bringing a little ben bit of banter. But like, he, he turned around to me after about three or four weeks and he's like, I love the way you've, you've, you've come in. Like, you've literally, you, you, like the boys have taken to you. And I could see that the boys have taken to me massively. Do you know what I mean? Like the boys that have been quiet before sitting there on their phones, they're trying to, trying to give me banter. Do you know what I mean? And I could see that I'd brought like a different side to it. And like, he was loving it. But then I felt like he thought then that I was too concerned or a few of us were too concerned, like me, Wheat, Lanners, like Mark Davis, Sparky. I felt like we was more on the banter side of stuff. And when the results weren't going, how we wanted them to go. Not taking it serious enough. Yeah. So I remember him pulling me one time and he pulled a couple of us and he pulled me and he was like, somebody's told me that you're messing around too much. And I was like, who the fuck said that? He's walk we're walking around the training field. He's like, took me for a walk and he's like, you're pissing around too much. Not taking I was fuming. This is in my, like my second season there. So I was like, who the fuck said that? The little grasses. I said, and I was fuming because I was thinking like, I don't like that in the dressing room. You've got a problem. If you think I'm messing around, come to me as a grown man and tell me that like you're not appreciating mm -hmm. certain but things. But, but six months, five months previous, he's praised you for that. But, but the results are not going our way. So that's when that's when straight away you just think this manager's a dick. Yeah. This manager's a clown. Did you think it was yeah. one of the players? Or? No, I just think that he just didn't like, he didn't really, he was quite, he's quite intense. And I remember him saying that to me and I was like, nah, fuck this man. Like, like, I, like I didn't really, I started to dislike him a little bit. And then we went out and like, it, it, I felt like he'd got rid of all the staff from the end of the season. So when I'd come in the January, in the May, he sacked a lot of staff and then he brought in new staff because he said that the, the old staff was too friendly with the players. And I kind of understand that as in a sense of you want your own staff, et cetera. A lot of managers do that. It's not unheard of. And then when he brought the new staff in, everything that was happening with the boys was getting back to the, the manager. We had a, a culture at Bolton for going out. I'm not going to lie. We'd got a lot, like a lot. Like, <laughs> a lot. lot. Like, on, uh, not, not in a week, but on Saturdays and that, yeah. And, and the... The boys there are like, they're big hitters. Do you know what I mean? Like, so if they want to go London and that and get a fucking, a taxi back up in the morning or whatever, they can do it. Do you know what I'm saying? We're at Barnsley, the boys are not doing that. Do you know what I mean? But the culture at Fingy's a lot, like they're, they're, the boys are doing a lot, going out a lot. And then we've, I've got to a point where I was injured, got injured off a tackle and I was out for a little bit. And I felt like he got fed up of me a little bit where he, I got into a fight out on a night out with a bouncer and he heard about it and it wasn't my fault because it was one of the other boys faults but I've just kind of backed it up and I think like from then he was kind of like nah like, cards marked yeah like a little bit because I know that I know that he knew about it because he brought it up to me in a later in a later in he did Dougie was quite he wouldn't shout he was just very, he'd say it in a way which was cutting just and it's cold. Do you know what I mean? Worse, isn't it? That? Yeah, mm. so it, it, it's, it's calm, but you just knew there was meaning in there. Yeah. You know, some people will shout, they'll shout, they'll shout. He just said it cutting. And like, basically, 
he didn't ask me the story, but I know that the book worked because basically what had happened was he was out and um, it's international break, but there was me, Neil Dans and Mark Davis. We went, we, there was a few of us, but we were the last three out. And we was in the strip club and, um, you know, like they're the only places that are serving drinks at them time of night, it's about four o'clock. Not on some pervy one, do you know what I mean? But just, just, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you just got for a drink, mate. You, you, know, know, you, know, you know, at that time, yeah. mate. There's nowhere else serving, is there? I'm nowhere in, else serving. I'm, I'm in bed, go? mate, full of lies, done a kebab, mate, by that time. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a nice pint in there, the winner. Oh, yeah, no, it's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. We're not bothered, it's fucking nine pound a pint, are you? You know what I mean? It's, a, it's a, some tits We're flying there, about. And I'm sitting at the table, and um, the, bou- like, the bouncers come over to me, and I'm sitting there on my own. Like, I'm sitting there, and he's going, You gotta go, mate. So these times here, I'm going to, this is on Tuesday night. I'm going to New York on Thursday morning with uh, Danzi and Zat, so, Zat Knight's already flew over there. So I'm going to New York. So I'm like, I'm not really bothered. Like these boys are wanting to stay out. I'm ready to go home. I was like, I said, why? At first I want to know why. Like, and he's like, ah, oh, there's been a report off one of the girls about you. So I'm like, what? I ain't even fucking moved. I've been in there five minutes here. I've just got my drink. I ain't even moved. He's like, oh, nah, inappropriate behavior, you gotta go. So I just thought, oh, fuck, this can't bother. So I've gone, not before I get my drink. I've gone to reach for my drink. In my face, punch me. So I was like, you know when you're like drunk, like, or like, you're like, I'm drunk, but I'm sobering up. And I'm like, nah, I'm thinking in my head, like, you know, like, <laughs> a little voice, like, <laughs> it's like, did he just punch me? <laughs> so I've gone, did you fucking punch me? <laughs> so I've like kind of been laughing at it. And he's like, looked at me, looked at me, like, he's like, just, just like, going yeah. Southpaw. Yeah, he's like, he's going Southpaw, he's got, <laughs> he's got fucking Kel Brook on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gone, now, did you fucking punch? So I've gone to grab him. So I've gone to grab him now. And then he's tried to swing at me again, it's got split up. So now I'm like, I'm, I'm raging. I thought, I've done nothing, I've literally done nothing. I've literally been sat in there and the man just punched me in my face. So I'm thinking, I'm not having this. I'm not having this. So like, the other bouncer come over now that split it up and, and Danzi and that have ran over. The, bou- the bouncer basically said like, one of the girls has said this. And I'm like, I've not fucking moved. I've not actually moved. Like, so I'm fuming, I'm not bothered about that. I'm more, you just punched me in my face and I'm not done fuck all wrong. You know, even if I'd done something wrong, you don't need to punch me in my face. I'm like, nah, <laughs> fuck this. <laughs> so I'm like, say to the bouncer, I said to the older bouncer, listen, this is gonna go two ways, yeah? Right, because if I was with, because I'm only with, I'm with Danzi and Sparky, yeah, right? Like, if my friends were there, yeah, this wouldn't have even got to that. Like, they would have, this bouncer would have been absolutely slumped on the floor. <laughs> so I'm thinking, nah, like, you're not, nah, just, nah, I'm not having this, I'm feeling, <laughs> feeling about it now. Still, huh? <laughs> so, like, I thought, like, nah. So I've turned around and I've gone, I've said to the bouncer, I said, listen, I'm not a dickhead, I'm not gonna be a dickhead. I said, but listen, He's either gonna come outside now and fight me, or we're gonna fucking scuff out in here. I said, it's one of the two. I said, but there's stuff gonna get smashed up in here. So it's up to you which one you wanna do. <laughs> it's up to you how you want this to take place. Cause I'm open to whichever. I don't, I, I, I'm, if, it's gotta go down in here if you're not coming outside to fight me. Yeah. yeah. It's going down in here. If, if you wanna come outside and fight me, like grown men, yeah, that's fine with me. So, <laughs> Dancing and Sparky are with the <laughs> Dancy and Sparky, yeah, are with the, the other bouncer. Dancy, obviously, Dancy's a fucking legend. So, and I've known Sparky from when we was at war. So, Sparky's like, you fucking shit house, come outside now, come outside. Dancy's like, come outside and fucking fight him, lad, fight him. So, like, the, the bouncer's scouser is right, he's like, lad, if I come outside, I'll fucking kill him. He's going, but obviously, I'm probably about. 15 stone at the time, do you know what I mean? But I'm look, I look slim. I don't, he probably didn't realize how heavy I actually was. So he's looking at me thinking I'm little. So the bouncer now he's a big steak bacon. He's like, if I go outside, I'm gonna fucking kill him. <laughs> so he's gone, he's gone. If I go outside, I'm gonna kill him. So the dance is like, come outside then, come outside. So we've gone outside now. So I'm waiting outside for the bouncer. He's come outside. He's got to come down the steps. As soon as he tried to come down the steps, he tried to hit me. He tried to hit me now, so we start scoffing. So that's scoffing. End up again. We end up against a taxi. So like now, I'm trying to get him, and I'm trying to like, cause we're wrestling. It's like a fucking wrestling match, yeah, right? WWE. <laughs> I'm trying to flip him over my hip, but this is like a Greg's big steak making. <laughs> 
Jump, jump park and cut over. Can't get a cut over my head. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to flip him now, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like, but but now I think because he's got a grip of me as well, and he's trying to rag me, he can feel like shit. He's not actually. I thought he was going to be lighter than this. Do you know what I mean? So he, I'm ragging him. So we're throwing punches at each other now. And then the taxi driver's come out. He's like, no, get off my taxi, get off my taxi. So like the bouncers come running in to stop it. So then Danzy's come running in to stop it as well. Cause Danzy doesn't want the other bouncer trying to get, get a little. So yeah. like Danzy's legend to be fair. I've got nothing but love for Danzy. So it's stopped. So now I've tried to go at the bouncer again now when it's got a split up. Fucking chocolate ankles here, yeah, right? I fucking rolled my ankle, yeah, I fell over. So he's got hold of me now, yeah? And I'm thinking, fuck, I need to get, I need to get free here. Cause I'm thinking, I, I can hear him. <laughs> he's got no fitness. <laughs> is it, am I've I breathing? Got, yeah, I can hear him breathing. Do you know what I'm saying? I've, I've, I've got, my fitness is decent. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm thinking, I need, get, I need to get free, but he's a strong fucker. So I thought to myself, so he's got hold of me now. He's hit me a couple of times, but I've managed to like kind of break round to where He's got me, I think to myself, like, to be fair, at the moment, this part of the section now, not the first part where we've got split up, because it's even, but this part, he's kind of got a little bit the better of me, but I know I've got the better of him, but I've just, because I fucking rolled my ankle, yeah, right on the floor, <laughs> I think to myself, I just need to get free. So Dante's there, like, fucking, one of Anthony Joshua's trainers on the side going, <laughs> Davo, you're fucking fitter than him, lad. <laughs> Davo, you're fitter than him. You've got him on fitness. You've got him on fitness. So I thought, fuck, I need to get free here. How long? How long's this period? How long's? It's probably it's probably only for about three minutes, but it feels about twenty. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, thought, I need to break fucking free here. I thought, fuck this. I've just thought, I've just gone mad. So I've just gone puff with the elbow, hit him and bang again with the elbow, but I've caught him twice with the elbow. So it's broke free. I broke free now and I'm free and I'm fresh and I can see he's breathing. <laughs> and he's I'm, struggling. And I've caught him in the, in the face, which has made his nose bleed. But my t shirt's fucking, I've got a v neck t shirt on. It's just ripped down the front. I thought, fuck. I thought, I'm going to go in for him, yeah. I thought, he's fucked here. Yeah. I've ran into him, hit him with like two or three punches, come back out, breather. <laughs> Come back it, I've done it about three times, but every time I'm catching him and he's trying to get hold of me. And he's he on the ropes. He's fucked, he's fucked. And then he's just turned around to me and he's like, lad, I'm not gonna lie. You beat me, you fucking beat me. And I just stopped, I walked over to him, shook his hand. I was like, I respect you for coming out here and fighting me like a man. I said, that didn't need to take place like that. I said like, I didn't do fuck all, you know? And I shook the other bouncer's hand and I just walked off. But fucking Sparky, the fucking little fucker. I'd videoed it on Snap and sent it to a few of the fucking boys. I think one of the staff members might have got it as well. And then obviously, that's how Doug oh, got Sparky, over it. come on, you're better than that. You're better you're better than than he's that. the one that fucking got me in the fight in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> fucking little fucker. <laughs> but like, obviously from then, mine and Dougie's relationship then was a little bit... And then so I've, see, had he seen the old video and everything? I don't know if it's in the video, but he'd heard, you know what I'm saying? He didn't like stuff like that. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not going to be out anywhere i don't care and even sometimes when i see these footballers now yeah in any walk of life if somebody hits you in your face yeah you're gonna defend yourself just because you're a footballer don't think that like sometimes i think they think footballers are pussies like don't hit somebody in their face you wouldn't you wouldn't just walk down the street and bang somebody in their face because they've got a man city top on because they've got a man united top but because you play football it's acceptable nah man but even though he didn't do it for that then obviously I've gone back into work and, 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 I, and I know that Dougie was fuming, but to make it worse, I went to New York. Obviously I'd just come back from, like I said, an ankle injury. I'd only been back in training about a week. Went to New York with Danzi and, and Zat and it was just a fucking massive piss up, man. Like literally was in New York and it was fucking, I'd never been to New York before. Been to America, but never New York. And we was there for three days and I swear to God, I was not sober, like at all. Enjoyed None of us it. were, we was just drunk, drinking come back on the Tuesday, well, come back on the Sunday night. Tuesday was in train. We went in Monday, but it's light session Tuesday. Like they wanted to make obviously a hard session, pulled my hammy. So I had the fight and the hamstring oh, tear. Shit. How was your ankle though? That is fine. fine. It was, no, no, it's fine. Oh, it was just so like a quick draw. No, 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 no. But obviously from the fight, they knew about on the Monday, the Tuesday, so I was just fucking injured. done. Oh, it's just like, and they knew I'd been in New York and I know that he rounded up all the staff and and crucified them was just like this and he shouldn't have been allowed to go because he's just come back from um, injury. He, sh he should have brought him in like to like, 
rehab, whatever, a bit more, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, from then I was just like, it was a little bit, it was curtains, not curtains for me, but it was just like a little bit like he was on my back. And then come January, I got, I'd back, come back at the end of December, I think it was. We played Cardiff, I played a full 90 or played it. Yeah, I think I played full 90 um, in the FA Cup. And then we played two more games after and I think I played both of them. And then he bought, I'd done well against QPR. We played QPR and then he just brought me in. He's like, oh, um, I'm going to let you go on loan to Preston. I was like, eh? I just played against QPR fucking 70 minutes the other day. Like, what you wonder about? He's like, yeah, like, obviously, um, Bex is back, going to be back fit soon, Jermaine Betford, and I just brought Djukovic in and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, all right, cool. I said, if you want me to go on loan, I'll go on loan. So I said, but I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to go to Preston. Like, they're in League One. He's like, I, don't, I said, I don't, I don't want to go to League One. I don't need to go to League One. Do you know what I mean? I've got championship clubs that take me. <clears throat> so I rang my agent. My agent was like, all right, cool, leave it with me. Come back and he's like, Blackburn want you to go there. And Burnley are interested as well. <clears throat> Burnley at the time are top as well. So I was like, obviously, even if I'm going into Burnley, because they had Volks and Danny Ings at the time doing really well, I was thinking to myself, oh, I prefer to go there and be a part of something than just fucking... Mm. But is he going to let you go to a team that's higher than you? He wouldn't. So I'm arguing back and forth with him in the office about the Blackburn thing and the Burnley thing. And he's like, listen, I can't, because if you go there and do well, it looks bad on me. And I'm like... That's fucking shit. I'll never understand that. Like, I'm like, that's shit. So I said, you don't wanna you don't wanna give me game time for whatever reason, but you, but you don't want me to go and do well somewhere where I could possibly improve, come back a better player or 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 like obviously I could have done that at Preston, but you know, you wanna do it at the highest level you can. Yeah. And he's looking after himself and Yeah, and he said, he said to be fair, he did say that in the office, he's like, I've got to cover my own back. And I was just like, nah man, fuck yeah. And I went to I went to Preston. Um, done average at best and then it brought me to the summer where he used to send out letters <laughs> so he'd send you a letter like at the end of the season saying about what you need to do with it and he put in the letter if like it was like I felt like it was quite sly with how it, how it was come across but he put something like if you come back to this football club and I thought nah like that again just give me that like that that bite so what I did was <laughs> I stuck it on my wardrobe in my bedroom, yeah? Like the, the letter that he'd sent me. And every morning that I woke up, I'd see the letter and it like, to, you know, like times oh, yeah. when you don't feel to do something. Oh, I don't feel to do that run or I don't feel to do that gym session. I'd see that and it like, I'll show you. But it's a driving it, force. Yeah, like if, if I'll, I'll, I'll come back and I'll play. And I remember like, went back into pre-season, was, was fit, was in good shape, strong. Do you know what I mean? I trained hard in the summer. You, where, where, where were you with your weight here then? Were you not, no, 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 no. So like, I, could, I couldn't play at 91. It wasn't me. And it, it sounds silly because it's only a couple of kilograms, but I felt like a baby. Yeah. I, I didn't feel like I had the extra bit of power that I needed. More of a sausage roll than a step back. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Like, I was thinking like a cheese and onion pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Which is nice, but not quite yeah, as nice as the state. Yeah. Have the same punch. It, it, uh, cheese and onion to go on holiday because it's nice. Ninety <laughs> one's good, but like a bit of thicker to play. Do you know what I mean? I need that, I need that, look, that thickness. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it might be a mental thing as well. To be fair, that I've just programmed myself so much. Mm. But um, I come back in at like ninety five, and I was just thinking to myself, "Fuck that! I've done it your way." Like, and it's done fuck all for me. So yeah. I might as well. If I'm gonna go out, I'll go out on what I'm gonna do. So we all pre-season done really well in pre-season but I knew he didn't want to play two up front in pre-season like there was a couple of times he tried it but he wanted to play a one up front and um, I knew he wanted to play Bex uh, Jermaine Beckford and I just I just done so like the last game of pre-season we played some Spanish team and he didn't bring me on he brought on some young boy in, in, instead of me and I just rang my agent and I was like listen get me the fuck out of here by Saturday I said I want to go I had a fuck enough I said I've been you know done really well in pre-season. You know what I mean? I deserve to be starting and he's bringing on a fucking young boy ahead of me. And I was sitting there all week. I was just waiting for that phone call off my agent. And um, we're in the, in the office on the Thursday, as like in the meeting room, sorry. And we're watching on, we're playing Watford. And um, we're like there and all of a sudden, um, I'm, I'm not even paying it. I'm not gonna lie. I was sitting there, it's dark in the room. They're doing the tactics. I'm not paying one bit of concentration. I couldn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I'm literally, my head's, I'm, I'm not even, I'm checked out. I'm just there sitting there. 
not listen to what they're saying. And Bex has gone, uh, Gaffer, you know when the ball gets played there, shall I show? Right? And then Dougie's gone, nah, 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 nah. He's gone, whoever's up, up front at the time, I want him to pull off and I want the hit on the diag. And he's like, Craig, if you're, and I'm thinking, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm thinking like, he's called me and I'm thinking, why is he called? Like, he's like, I want you. So now he's kind of pied Bex off before he said, yeah. Cause, cause Bex, I think just assumed that he was starting. I thought I wasn't starting, I wasn't even paying attention. We'd been in the meeting about 10 minutes and I couldn't tell you one word that he'd said. So all of a sudden he goes, Craig, I want you to peel off, yeah? I was like, shit, I better pay attention here now. <laughs> <laughs> so I sit there and I'm like, oh, I turn around and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you know, if this happens, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. So I was like, all right, cool, cool. So I was like, all right. So we went on to the training field and we worked on it. And I was starting on the first game of the season. And all the time that he played, up until he got the sack, I played bar one game. I played every game under him. He started me every game. Cause, and, and, and our relationship, I felt like he changed a little bit because I felt like he was so stubborn at first. Then I started to like, we had a bit, we understood each other a little bit better. I understood him and he understood me a, bit, a little bit better. Um, we played Brighton, I think it was the third game and we lost. And then change room at half time, he turned around, not at the, after the game, he turned around, he's like, some of you need to take a leaf out of his book. And he pointed at me. I was like, me? And he's like, I told him he could fucking go in the summer and he's come back in, all he's done is fight fight to get back in the team and I thought like no nah, this, this he's actually all right you know like my, my, my attitude towards him kind of changed you know what I mean and I start like I said I started to like him like and then <laughs> we, we went to uh Jay Spearman was like no nah, we're doing shit <laughs> we need it we need a boys a boys night out international break's coming up soon <laughs> so like <laughs> Jay was like oh a few of us should we do something somebody come up with the idea about going to Ibiza for the day yeah, right. for the day <laughs> on the Sunday, on the Sunday. So we played Leeds on the on the Saturday, and uh, <laughs> we went to Ibiza right for the day. But we was bottom at the time. Obviously, the season just started. Do you know what I mean? There's only three or four games. We three games and one cup game. So, but we was bottom in the league. We wasn't gonna stay there, but we just had a shit run of games. We went to Ibiza and we was like, nah, no, nobody's gonna find out. Nobody's gonna find out. All of a sudden, social media wasn't as big back then, do you know what I mean? Like, n now, <laughs> it, it, you, the club would know within a second, do you know what I mean? <clears throat> wasn't as big back then. So we went to Ibiza for the day on the Sunday. But we get back on the Monday and um, we back in train on Tuesday. Some fucking, that's some commitment that we're in Ibiza for the day Listen, good day like I said there was a gang like when we rolled <laughs> we rolled in a gang and there was about fucking nine of us yeah right that went right uh Wheats was chewing because Wheats hurt himself in the warm-up so they had him in on the Sunday and the Monday so he couldn't come but we went and literally it was fucking carnage and basically they I think on the flight Somebody recognised, there was a Liverpool fan on there, recognised Spiro, recognised Jay, took a picture of Jay. No, at the pool party that was, sorry, the pool party. And at the, on the flight, an Everton fan was on there, recognised Jermaine Beckford, so took a picture of him, obviously put it on Twitter. You know how busy fans are. Like somebody's, social media now is much bigger than it was then. We're talking 2014. So one of the fans has like, obviously seen it. Oh, man. That, you know, when we went back in, we just knew he was in the doghouse. He didn't even say nothing. And the worst thing was, Jay Spearing had been in, um, he'd gone in the pool. Obviously, it was an ocean club. It's fucking unbelievable, Dave, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we need. That's the main <laughs> thing we need to it know. It was <laughs> unbelievable. I'm not lying. For one, we literally went for the day. We literally got up at six in the morning. We got to IB for like 10 or something stupid. Went for breakfast, checked into our hotel at 12 and literally got into our, onto the table at the pool party for like one o'clock. We was there from one to like, it shut at 11 or whatever. And we was tanked, like literally. <laughs> but Spiro, yeah, had gone in the fucking pool and somebody that had a broken glass in there and he stepped on it. Straight away, it was like, oh, you can't really, in, like, we're like, oh, I'm gonna have to make an excuse up of why you've done that, do you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Went back, but by the time we got back on the Tuesday morning, we got wind of, they knew that we'd been in Ibiza and they was fucking chewing. And you could tell, like I said, with Dougie, he would never 
he wasn't a shouter. He wasn't a Shez or, an, or a Neil knew. Lennon. You just knew. And he's like, he's been out, and he's been out. And we're like, yeah. And he never said nothing about it. Never until we played Fulham and that was his last game. And he knew, I think he knew we'd got battered by Fulham 3-0. And he just started going in, in on all of us. That went like FIFA. Individually. Going, yeah, he, he went in on all of us. He went in on every player in that change room. But do you know what? To be fair, yeah, like I'm somebody like, I can take shit on the chin, do you know what I'm saying? And I thought like, I felt like you should have probably been doing this earlier to the players. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, because some people- how long after is this? Like, um, October, so the end of, so about six weeks. Right. To be fair though, like as, as far as rules go, You've not actually broken anything. You've not actually done anything wrong, no, have you? but you know what it is? It's, you know as well as I do. Sometimes in football, it's not about rules. It's about on the unwritten rules. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And you, you, like, league, you, know, you know, for instance, there's no rule actually that you can't go out on a Tuesday. But n now you can't really go out on a Tuesday. It's like an unwritten rule. It used to be when I was younger, don't go out 48 hours before a game. But they wouldn't, to, as my career went on, it was... They wouldn't like you going out on a Tuesday to the point where even if you went out on a Saturday and there was a, an important game the next Saturday, they wouldn't like it. Yeah, do you get that. do you get what I mean though? They, they they wouldn't. It's like, but they're not rules, but they're unwritten rules. Yeah. Oh, you shouldn't be going out if you've got beat four nil. But there's no rule that says that. It's just an unwritten rule it's that. Just it's yeah, that's yeah, possible. like and obviously like he went, he literally went in on us. He's like, I question the ones that went to Ibiza. I question you. <laughs> and I question the ones that didn't go for me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, and he literally went around the whole dressing room and he just, he went, he went in on and everybody to be fair. How was Joe Spearing after the glass? Was he, was he, no, he was fine. Like, now he, I think he missed a couple of days. I don't know if he missed like the game after. I don't even know if that was a, is a known thing, but fuck it, it is what it is in it. Do you know what I mean? Jake and I, <laughs> Jake and I mind me saying that, but like literally it was just like, it was, it was carnage. But then obviously we had that style from Dougie, then Lennon come in and it was just fucking night and day. Do you know what I mean? Like literally, like Dougie was like, Dougie's cut was more about detail. Lennon was like, yo, you better put your rugby gear on because <laughs> motherfuckers getting smashed. <laughs> literally, <laughs> like literally no joke, yeah. I, I, I yeah, he is one of my favorite managers. Really? Play. Yeah, like I fucking, uh, like me playing under him, I would have ran, I'd have done some mad shit because he used to just wind me up that much. He used to get me that pumped that I was just, I, and I liked him. He just used to get me what, like- What's his method like? Shouting. All out of him, shouting, man. In your face. Ah, oh, mate, you, this, this guy will get in your face, man. I remember one time he was there, he started shouting at me, and I'm like slouched like this. But I just caught, I just, I've been injured, so I was sitting there like this, and he started shouting at me, and he turned around, he's like, you've been fucking off your rehab, but I hadn't, but one time I'd played head tennis with him, and the staff in the back, that now my head tennis skills are good. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to let Brian Tolbert know that. <laughs> <laughs> that like, so I played in the back room with Lennon for about three hours after one after one day because I could play head tennis, but I was still injured at the time. But I was coming back like running, doing all the functional stuff, and that was fine. So because I was playing with them for like three hours on this hard ground, my legs fucking seized up the next day, and I had to run, and I couldn't do the running. So then Lennon just took that. And I, I explained why. I was like, my legs just weren't used to that. Do you know what I mean? It's a one-off. Cool. So I'm like, listen, that's why. And the fitness coach was cool, to be fair. Um, Chris Shaw, at the time, he was cool with it. He knew. Do you know what I mean? He knew I never fuck sessions off. So I turned around anyway. And um, I was slouched like this, yeah. And he turned around. He's like, you fucking fuck. Because I should have scored. About the 88th minute, I missed the header. Should have scored it. Because I've missed the chance. He's kind of taking out on me. He's like, and you fucking off your fucking re He's like, how did you score that? I was like, I know, man. But I don't need you to tell me. I know. So then he's turned around and he's like, fucking off your rehab all the time. I turned around, I was like, who's fucking off my rehab? He's gone, you fucking off your rehab. I said, and I can see him, like, because normally he's one of them, he'll come at you a little bit. And I can see him coming to, I just sat up like this. And I was thinking, nah, <laughs> big man, I like you. <laughs> But you don't want this over here. <laughs> this is 100% state making. 
<laughs> you're not getting him over the hip, are you? No, he's, nah, he's getting over the hip. <laughs> nah, and I was, but I was fuming, but I had mad respect for him, do you know what I mean? And I liked him, but he was just that fiery character. Like his first week in training, he come in, he come in and he was like, <laughs> you could tell he had that like bite to him. You know what I mean? You could tell it, he's like, he's like a firework. You fucking spark it up throw it over there. It's going to go off. You just don't know when, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like he was literally like that, but I fucking love that. Do you know what I mean? I love that about him. He turned around and obviously we, I, I've seen him on the telly growing up playing for Leicester. No, he's a cannon. Do you know what I mean? Seen him as a manager trying to fight Annie McCoy to them, them things there. <laughs> I know what he's like. I think it was the Wednesday. They had us in training every day. Like, you know, like normally Wednesday off, like nah. Like literally the his first week he had us in training every day. I think he wanted to just let people know, like, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah. You know business. what I mean? Yeah. He's one of them, like, you know what it's like? Like, you let fouls go and that, and it pisses the players off because it's a foul. It should be given a foul, but it pisses the players off. The level of the intensity tra train session rises. Right. People start getting smashed in that. So then all of a sudden, he's let this one go on Jay, and then he's blew up for Jay giving a foul. So then... I think Jay's felt hard done by it. Jay's gone, oh, fuck off. So he's gone, who the fuck are you telling to fuck off? So Jay's not answered. Jay's got it back to him. He's like, who the fuck are you telling to fuck off? Jay's not answered. He, he starts marching off Jay. He's like, who the fuck are you telling to fuck off? He's flipping, took the snooze out of his mouth on the floor. <laughs> and Jay's like, I wasn't talking to you, Gaffer. <laughs> Scout's tough, man. <laughs> He's got bullies. <laughs> After Ginger. <laughs> she took his snow, sir. Yeah, like, he didn't... Like, but then after that, I remember, like, everybody was just like... That was his first week. And I remember people just thinking, like, nah, he ain't fucking around, you know what I mean? And Not literally... fear factor. Yeah, like, straight away, people were a little bit like... Do you know players that normally, like, take the piss a little bit and that? Nah, they wasn't taking the piss. Like, like he was on it. Like young v old, oh my God, on a Friday. That was more important than the fucking Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, like literally, I'm telling you now, young v old, and they, we had a couple of good young players as well, right, at the time. And that would, you know, ripping people up in them small sided. So like the older players, I, I just got into the old team by this time, I'm about 28, 29. So like, literally, it's, they're beating us. Like often, so like the older players are just trying <laughs> to leave it out there. We had like a Mio Heskey playing at the back and that, you know, <laughs> coming like Saul Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, it was getting aggressive. That, that, but Lennon loved that. Like he would literally, he would want that on the, you know, like most managers on a Friday are like, whoa, 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 don't, like, no, no exactly. like, nah, like, do your bit. <laughs> literally, it was, it was crazy on a Friday. But like I said, for me, I I loved that shit, do you know what I mean? I loved that, that that used to get me up and that used to make me want to play for him. And mo mo most time when I was like, wasn't injured, I played under him, do you know what I mean? I, li I liked him a lot, mm. you know what I mean? He was good. Obviously like some players wouldn't be able to handle him. Some players make, that might not tick their boxes. Every player is different, but for me, that shit used to turn me on. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it did lose its effect, though, for the, for the other lads. Some some of them, I think it was, but do you know what? Because I, I did see a little bit of Matt Mills's, and Matt Mills said that, but I don't think... It, Matt Mills said that it lost the effect a little bit when I seen his under the cosh. But right. I, I don't think... I think that they told Lennon when he come in, I think he got sold a raw deal. They told him that when he come in, we've got this for you, we've got that for you. And then when it come to back in it, they didn't have fuck all. Mm. And that literally we was getting players injured. His main players were getting injured. So then his second season in charge, when they was really fucked, he wasn't getting the players that he wanted to get in. And he wasn't getting them players. Like he'd been sold the dream, do you know what I mean? Mm. But with what he had in that first year, he did do well. I liked him. I do like him as a, as a person and as a manager, do you know what I mean? And he would actually have a fight with it after if he- I, if... I'd never seen him have a fight. But I think if he you, would, yeah, you right seen buttons. him as a player, like, you, like you seen him as a player, like he's fiery, man, like, <laughs> like. About his game. Yeah, he's hundred percent. Like, he's dirty. I know. But yeah, I, I can imagine standing eyes like. I bet if you get him in the ass, dude. <laughs> if, you get, <laughs> if you get, if you get three, if you get him into three minutes, though, I think he's fatiguing. Yeah, he's you know what I mean? And then you can go in and bob him with one, two, three, and then <laughs> nip back out. Uh, he um, 
he, he, he's, he's game. I think he's game. I, I, I think he's fully on it to fight. <laughs> <laughs> a little breaking play, gents, for uh, a thank you to our sponsor for this episode, NordVPN. I don't know it's if you're aware of it. Are you aware of NordVPN? No. Well, for, all, for everybody out there as well, NordVPN is the number one for bouncing your geolocation. So you, maybe a game's only on in China, for instance, and you want to watch it, Barnes of E. Nottingham Forest, all of a sudden use NordVPN on the subscription, and you're in China watching that game, John. So let me just get this right. So I'm sat in Barnsley. Yeah. There's a game on in China. It's been shown in China. But an English game yeah. shown in China. Yeah. Use my, NordVPN. And that makes my computer seem like it's in China. And you're watching that game. Sat there with a sweet and sour watching Barnes of E. Nottingham Forest. Well, I didn't even know that, that? I didn't even know what a VPN were. What's the quality VPN? like? Oh, the, it's the number one quality for all VPN services as well. Buffering? No buffering. No, we don't do no buffering. Sold. And as always, we've got a special offer. We've got a cost code. We always have special offers. That, well, that's why the calls are the good yeah. guys. All you've got to do is click on the link in the description and you'll get the special offer with anti-malware and threat protection with part of, as part of your subscription. So all you've got to do is click on that link. Before you know it, you'll be watching that game. So just to clarify, I can watch any game. Any game. Well, not any any game that's being broadcast, yeah. Right, perfect. Yeah. How good's that? So, what yeah, massive thanks to NordVPN. Yeah, thank you. And what, what, just what, what game am I going to watch this weekend? That's me. That's my only problem in life now. <laughs> so did uh, did Lennon let you go eventually? Is it? So yeah. So basically, I just kept on picking up niggly hamstring injuries, and they'd offered me a contract earlier on, um, and it, I felt like I'd done well that season when I played like really well, and they'd offered me less money. And I just turned around and I was like, nah, I said like, I at least deserve to be on the same money that I'm on. We kind of haggled back and forth. Um, and I got an injury in one of the games that kept me out. And then um, play Cardiff, I scored the two on the weekend. And they was like, you know, possibly get, just get something sorted. And then I got injured on the Thursday and I was out for the rest of the season. And I just think in that time then it was just like, nah, he's done his hamstring probably about four or five times since he's been here. And I was just like, I'm not going to sign for, for that money. And then it just ended. You know, when you're you know, you doing your hamstring, are you doing your rehab and everything properly and getting. Yeah, like, do you know what, do you know what it was? Like, like, I didn't realize this till I went to Wigan because I'd done it again when I went to Wigan, but it was, it was never like, it was never that long. It was like maybe five weeks or something like that, but it's just niggly. Do you know what I mean? Then when I went to Wigan, um, I went to see uh, a guy and it was about orthotics. And I'd, Bolton had sent me to so many different specialists, so many, they give me so many, oh, it's because you've got a, a sports car and you sit low down, or you, you, it's because of this, because um, you had some work done on your teeth, whatever, I'd, like, and you, your bite's different. or so, like, There was so much stuff I was getting told. And then I went to see this guy and the guy was like, oh, you've got a leg length difference, you know that? And I was like, yeah, I know that. And he's like, your body just can't compensate as you got older, you need orthotics. And I was like, Nah, that can't be it. And he's like, I'm telling you. So he's, he's like, look. So I went on those, this walking machine thing and you could see how much more I was taking on one side. And he's like, he's like, that's the hamstring that you're always doing, isn't it? And I was like, yeah. He's like, that's why. So I was thinking, nah. And I'd spent money on my own. I spent so much money on my own trying to find out the problem the as problem well. Is, yeah. Got, trying to get it sorted. Basically, I had a leg length difference. And as soon as I got the orthotics changed, like change the game. Like literally, I wasn't getting the tears like so that. So what's the orthotic? It's just like, it's like a, like you might in put a, it in like your a cube in your built up shoe. Yeah, pretty much, eh? Put a little, like, just like, inner soles yeah. in your shoe, basically. I've got just them in there. The, and then that's, I'm sure we've had somebody else who said that, that they just got a, an insole and then that were it. Yeah, they because were, my body, obviously, right. I'm getting older, can't compensate. Matt Jarvis. Was it? Is that, is that what it was? I'm back, I've just thrown a name out there. I've, I've, I've fucking no idea. I don't even know if I'm recording Matt Jarvis. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Matt Jarvis. Yeah. Obviously, then I ended up going, like, like, I went from left Bolton, went to Wigan. Like, on a personal level, I probably didn't play my best football there. Um, but on the on a whole, like, it was a great year. Obviously, well, I was there for, like, 18 months. Um, but... It was the promotion, the team, the lads. It was good, man. Like, do you know what I mean? It was just... Is that Whelan then? Yeah. Yeah, Junior, yeah. though. Whelan, the... No, it would have been Dave, wouldn't it? 
Yeah, no, so like basically his um, grandson was running it. I'm going to say how good it is, grandson. Yeah, but <laughs> Dave is in charge. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's pulling the like, strings. Yeah, like imagine like one time, so like it gets towards the end of the season, right? We're flying, burnt on the top. So we need to, we want, they want to catch them, but we're about fourth at the time, but we're coming like a fucking, like a virgin train. Do you know what I mean? We're literally, <laughs> choo -choo. Poof, we're hitting the stretch. We're flying. We don't even, like every game we go into, even if we go behind, we just know we're winning the game. And um, they've come in on uh, Easter weekend. They've gone to us. Oh, is it Easter weekend? I think so. They've had two games in quick succession and he's gone, listen, if you win, this isn't before that we're playing Bradford. Bradford are undefeated in 10, they're flying. There's 10 games left. He's going, if you win and get promoted, I'll double your bonus. Yeah. But I'll bring it to your cash. I'll sort it. Like, I'll bring the money into you. Fucking hell, it's like we're in Greece. So we're like, we're all in the changing room before the Brad Brad Bradford game. And I'm not joking, literally. That's probably because Bri Bradford were I keep on saying Brighton. Bradford were flying at the time. I think possibly they might have beat us that day if we didn't have the incentive. That, that incentive because literally they was flying. They was good. Do you know what I mean? We end up beating them one 0 I swear to God, we weren't losing that game when when they. I can imagine people running around like fucking headless oh, chicken. Oh, we was not losing that game as soon as as Big Dave said that. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Big like, Dave. We was not losing that game and we won one nil. Then we won the other game. Then he, he said, I'll come in next week just to show you some money. So we were all like, cool. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what, as if you don't know what money looks like. <laughs> like but, no, but obviously like, you know what I mean? Like, what, This is pal, this is Scrooge McDuck stuff. He's come in and um, we've won three games since this has been said and we're making ground. I think we beat Burton in that time as well. I'm sure we did which we was trying to catch. He's come in, he's coming changing rooms. He's there and I'm like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Think we've got to see that, like, man's about to open the bag. And we're, like, <laughs> we're about to see that like, 100 grand or something. We're like, Dave's yeah, here, oh, Dave's here, Dave's make, here. Make, make it <laughs> fucking rain up in it. Has he got his old hole? Has he brought his old hole? <laughs> Big Dave Whelan's yeah. making it rain. You know? Imagine it in one of them old <laughs> Big JJB bags. Them leather, them leather head bags, you know, with, with, with boat bag bits, it, bit, and <laughs> stuffed in there as well. He's come in and he's got like this little bag. And we're like, wow, what's in there? Like, obviously, it's not, it's not cash in there. And he's like, listen, he's all, he starts like speaking. He's like, you're lucky. He's getting to do this, blah, 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 and getting paid for it. Now, listen, like, if you if you get promoted, and he's pulled up five grand, and he's like, pass that around. Look at that. And I'm thinking, most of us in here are on decent money for this level. Do you know what I'm saying? And quite a few of us in here have played higher. We've seen five grand. No. <laughs> Like, no disrespect. Like, listen, five grand is five grand. I'm not, I'm not yeah. mocking the money, but I'm saying we've seen five grand. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the boys are going Vegas every fucking summer and blowing fucking money. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, like, we've seen five grand. So we're a little bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you come in with 500 grand, we'd all be like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yo, let's get the promotion. You know? So we were a little bit confused. So, like, when he's left, we're all like baffled and the mood in the camp's just like woof, deflated. This sounds self, like, this sounds bad, like, you know, like somebody that's not been in football, but in football, you know how it kind of works, do you know what I mean? So you've been promised something now. So we're like, wow, what? Like, so like, the captain's gone up to see the manager. He's going, what, what, what's going on? And he's like, oh, what? Did you think you were going to get that? And he's like, whoa, 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 what? That's what was said. So like, no, no, like I don't like I don't think he meant it now. So there's confusion now. But no, oh, big there's, there's, no com, there's no confusion. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I heard. <laughs> Fucking Dave's going over Dave's going over the hip. <laughs> <laughs> hey. No, 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 no. Fucking you read about classics, Dave. Fuck you. So like we're all like, like a little bit. The captain, Can you remember what the actual bonus were? To go up. It must it must have been a couple hundred grand, was it? Between us. Yeah. Yeah, it was between us. It was like it was. It wasn't. I can't remember what it was. It worked out like it was a decent amount. Do you know what I mean? But nothing like. I think it was like. I think if you played all the games, you might have come out with like forty grand or something like that. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's a. So it's in so doubling you, the bonus. So if you, if you'd have got eighty grand, do you know what I'm saying? So like, but like without tax, like or whatnot, like. 
So we were like, what the fuck? Like, so like a lot of like, a lot of people now, yeah, because we kind of know, like I said, we're coming like the Virgin train. We're, we're, we're literally just charging down teams, just knocking them over. So we know we're going to get promoted. So it's like, well, like this money that now that you think that you're going to have, you're not going to have. So it's like, oh, what's going on? So we've called the meeting because now the boys are not happy. <laughs> <laughs> this is going too far, Dave. Now. So like, no, nah, but Dave's not, that, that, uh, Mr. Whelan, no, nah, to be fair, he's, he's a ledge, man. I, I, I buzzed off him. Like he didn't come. So the management team have come and his grandson, Sharpie, has come. Do you know what I mean? He choked his grandson in. Well, Deal but, with that. Well, Sharpie, Sharpie was the one that lads I was joking. It was only about fucking 25. I'm going to jump in yeah, this yeah. afternoon. So he's, so he's come in. We've had a meeting with him, right? There's 20 angry lads waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be a good, it'll be a good test for you, young man, this. It's good test. Get to grand. Go tell him we're getting fuck call. <laughs> so so he's, he's come in there now and he's like, listen, like my granddad sometimes doesn't know what he's saying and that. I'm thinking, nah. <laughs> nah well, I know what the fuck I heard. Like, so I turn around, you're like, like, no, like you was in the room with me. Like, 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 so I'm thinking Sharpie was there, like, and I like Sharpie, like, but you was in the room when your granddad was saying this, so you could have at least when your granddad left, yeah, like, because obviously Mr. Whelan, like, he's power, he's a powerful one. Let's let's get let's get it straight. He's the powerful one, do you know what I'm saying? But when he's left, you could be like, listen, like. I can't really overrule him and speak over him, but that's not, you know what I mean? We, we can't it's like the Queen that. and Prince Charles, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> when yeah. the Queen's left the room, you're going to pull around like, listen, like, yo, listen. <laughs> listen, Andrew, you shouldn't have done that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you just cost me 12 million. <laughs> you couldn't. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> you little fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying though. Like literally, if the Queen left the room, Prince Charles would listen. That's not what's you know what I mean. Yeah. And I felt like he could have done that. So literally, everybody's got no voice now, apart from me and Sam Morsey. So me and Sam Morsey are like, well, what? We're not going to get no money like from it. Blah blah blah. And they turn around and he's like, no. Nah. He's like, that's not basically not going to happen. And I could see it wasn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. But he's like, listen, you get your original bonus, but if you get promoted, we'll send you to Vegas. <clears throat> we'll pay for Vegas and we'll give you 30 grand a day, right? And we're just like, even though it's not the double bonus, 30 grand a day. So we get promoted anyway. And we go Vegas and I'm not joking. The trip to Vegas was fucking... What, what 30 grand a day? Give us 30 grand a day. How, how many days? So they give us 15 grand on the Thursday night because we've got the Thursday day. So we only could go to the night time. Friday, day and night. 30, like as in a sense of 15, 15, or if you wanted to do 20 and 10, do you know what I'm saying? Saturday, 15, 15. And then Sunday, some of the boys left, but a couple of us stayed. And then obviously we had to spend our own money then. But it's like, so it worked out like what? 75 grand or something like that. Is that right? Yeah, 75 grand. And is there any stipulations? Like, do you have to spend the 30 grand in the day? So like basically they'd paid the tabs. So we basically was like, oh. Keeping t- we've, so like, we've got it, another five to spend, boys. That's what they were ordering. No, no, it was like, it was like, no, it was like, it, but it was like, um, so say for instance, people that have been there before, I'd been there like five times or whatever. I knew how Vegas runs. Few of the boys have been there. So we all, it was like, listen, this pool party's better. So you probably want to spend more here and less at the night. That night's not as good. This night's going to be good. Probably spend less in the day. Do you get what I mean? But honest to fucking God. The trip to Vegas was on, because that is free. I think, <laughs> I think, I'm not joking. I think I spent on that trip, yeah. I spent my, some of my own money on the Sunday because a few of us stayed on the Sunday, but they paid for that. So you could literally stay and they, they literally covered that Sunday, just extended the flight and give us another night in the hotel. But apart from that Sunday, I'd spent from the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'd spent like $300. Like and literally just food and taxis and you've been, and you and you've been I, in for fucking ninety grand and well seventy five in it like it was on honestly <laughs> and I remember like seeing like a couple of the boys and that and I just didn't feel like some of them were appreciated because they'd never been <laughs> and I'm thinking yo I've been here five times and I've paid out my own money I know like how mu- we've got the best tables like we had like Burnley got promoted and we got promoted we had better tables than Burnley <laughs> like. 
you know what I mean? And they're going into the Prem, like we're coming up from League One and it's just like, literally we're like, got there the first night we got there. All the waitresses come out with Wigan shirts on, Wigan flag. <laughs> I, I was just like, do you know, like I'm thinking, these, these cunts probably don't know football. Yeah. They, which they don't over there, let's be honest. You think they we, we we send them some shirts no, on? But, no, but I'm on about, like, like I'm Put on these about, on, put these on. Why are we putting these on? No, we've got 30 grand spent, put them on. But I'm Make them feel like, at home. You know, the, you, know the, you know the people in the club? They think we're fucking Man City. Also, like, because that's how much of a commotion they're making. And I was thinking, <laughs> like, yous, I always remember thinking, yous will never, some of you will never experience nothing like this ever. Do you know what I mean? It was on real it was unbelievable like honestly i've never i've been to vegas like quite a few times and i know what it's like to spend out your own money this shit was free <laughs> <laughs> i was getting the shot so i was like yeah. <laughs> you can't <laughs> we learn <laughs> trust me, trust me. <laughs> well you know what i want to touch on you there's the before we go off wigan yeah as well, our Christmas do, yeah? It's the quick one, because I know one or two people messaged me about this, to be fair. Went on a Christmas do, right? So it was when um, Anthony Joshua fought Dillian White. Um, 2015, yeah, 2015, wasn't it? 2015. So we always, like, deciding what to do for the Christmas doing that. So I said, listen, what? there's a day party in Birmingham on the Sunday, which is good. Like, I can sort it, because I know the guy, right? We can go and watch the boxing on the Saturday and then go out on the Saturday as well. I know a club that's decent. So we went out, done that, went to this place, like aired the boxing. Boys had a sick time, good time, went out on the night. It was really good. Fancy dress on the Sunday. So we're near the canal and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the boys just start talking shit. So he goes to Dave Perkins. You jump in there, he's got his big Santa costume on. <laughs> Can you jump in there? Give you 200 pounds. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, nah, like, it's a long way. Like, if you jump in there, try to swim it. To swim it. It's not far, like, but... It's Christmas as well. Wet, wet, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's freezing. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's wet like Santa suit. <laughs> he's going, nah, nah, I don't know about that. Don't know about that. So one of the young boys, Jonah Flores, I think he's at Northampton on loan from Hull at the moment. He's at Hull. He's gone. So he's gone from swimming it to jumping. There's a next bit. You can jump. <clears throat> So he's turned around and he's gone, uh, I'll do it. So like, you jump that? He's like, yeah, I'll do it. We're all charged up, drunk. Been drinking, obviously, we've probably not been sober now for like 24 hours. <clears throat> he's got this Craig David bowl selector mask on, <laughs> right? So we're all in fancy dress. All of a sudden, he's ran, jumped, he's made it. But to make it, he's had to do like a long jump, you know, where they put their legs forward, but your body's back. He's then waited at the he's back. He's put his arm like that, yeah. Yo. <laughs> Made it. We're all laughing because he slipped over. So we're all crying because we've got the slip. Everybody's got it on camera. We don't realise it. <laughs> the poor cunt's fucking dislocated his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and he's rolling around. <laughs> <laughs> but all we can see is his bowl selector <laughs> He's rolling you on the floor. And he's just rolling like, he's rolling like bad. Like, so we're all laughing because we don't know he's hurt because we can't see his face. All we can see is his same both electricity. <laughs> <laughs> so he's walked around the bridge and he's like, lads, lads. And he's come over and his fucking shoulders just hanging, man. Shoulders hanging off. And I'm like, nah, like, you know when you have to go into that sober mode now? Nah, we've called an ambulance. Ambulance has turned up after about 45 minutes because obviously it's Christmas time. Loads of people, they're like, what, what is it? We're like, he dislocated his shoulder. So they know it's not life-threatening. And I was just like, nah. I said to him, listen, when you're going to work, because he's like, what shall I say? What shall I say? He's like young at the time. I said, listen, man, you just got to tell him what happened because there's 20 people that are going to know this story. It's going to get back in some form of way in the end, especially just be honest and upfront with it. He done it, man. And he got, I think, I think Calderwell at the time, because obviously we was doing well at the time. I think you might find him, but it was kind of swept under the carpet. But 
I've actually got the video as well of, of, of him doing it. It's fucking... We'd like to, we'd like to see that. Yeah, I'll show you. It's classic. Like, honestly, it's fucking classic. It's what... Honestly, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. And the fact that he's got the ball select from... I just always think of... Do you know when Craig Davies used to go, oh, ball select? <laughs> you, what's his name? What the uh, Keith... Um, Keith Lard. Keith Lemon. Keith, Keith Lemon. Lard. Fucking hell. <laughs> Keith Lemon. I just always remember thinking, hearing his voice saying it. So the only time I see it, that's what I just see, but I swear it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen, man, but yeah, he fucked Fuck up his shoulder man. from that. So you, were, you, you had a brief spell at Scunthorpe and yeah. then back with Uncle Shez at Oldham? Back at Oldham then with Shez and then obviously... It's a bit like fucking Paddy Kenny and Warnock, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is, to be fair. It is, to be fair, when I think about it. But he, um, when he come back in, we had a good squad, to be fair, at Oldham. Probably should have done better than we were doing, but I don't know, like, I think we've... It sounds bad, yeah, but we probably had... Shez was a baller, do you know what I mean? He was a good ball player, so he liked ball players. Anybody I ever played with, like, when I was with him, if they could, you know, they're proper good on the ball, he would always love that, them players. And I felt like we had a couple of them in midfield and didn't have anybody that would do the gritty side of it. So I felt like we had one boy that could do it and Shez didn't probably play him. And I felt like if Shez probably played him, we would probably, not that one player can, but one player can make that much of a difference to be fair. Mm. Not that he was fucking, he wasn't Kante, but, you know, he could do, he'd do all the, the, the shitty jobs, you know what I'm saying, that the others didn't want to do. And I felt like obviously it kind of cost us a little bit, do you know what I mean? We, was getting the, we wasn't getting over the line in certain games, do you know what I mean? Like, and I felt like it cost us. And then Big Abdallah was trying to take over. And I think Abdallah just had his, his, his eyes set on bringing somebody else in then, do you know what I mean? And we wasn't doing great, so it made it easier for them, do you know what I mean? And before he actually got the whole reins of the club, they kind of wanted Shez gone, do you know what I mean? Which mm. I, I felt like Shez should have had probably more time. I felt like he should have had a little bit more time. I felt like he deserved more time. Because Abdullah, I mean, we've heard, we've heard numerous accounts, haven't we, of people at Oldham and the bad experiences they've had. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, you had a similar experience, did you? Yeah, I was the first one. I called him out first and everybody yeah. was like, ah, oh, da, 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 on Twitter, don't fucking talk about Oldham like that. Yeah, you, you cunt, you shit, you this and that. I wasn't talking bad about the club. I was saying about the, the owner and I predicted what was going to happen then. Do you know what I mean? Hopefully now at the moment, Shez has come back in and saved his ass. And they're not going to go down. But I said to them, if that's if they're not careful, I said this one I left. If they're not careful, this geese is going to have you in the conference in no time. Do you know what I mean? And that's exactly what was. That's so what, ex- what 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 were you saying and what were you experiencing that just like made you speak? He wasn't out paying. Like he wasn't paying players on time. The way he was treating staff and that. Do you know what I mean? I thought to myself, you staff members that I've been at the club for, like bearing in mind, I've been at Oldham twice. So I know some of the people from my first spell, they've been there. Do you know what I mean? They're the, they're the core of the Back club. Of, yeah. yeah, right. He's upsetting these local people. And then he's trying to get the next person to do two or three jobs. Then they're getting overran. And then they're going to end up leaving because they can't deal with the workload. Then he's bringing in just random people. And I could just see it was just turning into a shit show. And out of all of the football clubs that I've ever been in, I'd never seen nothing like this in my whole career. And I just thought, this is, this is, this is going to end bad. He's not paying the players. Then, it, then, I, then me or Anthony Gerrard, because Peter Clark was a captain, but Clarky went on loan after a while. Like, he would like, I'd go in there. And like me and Clark, me, me and Jez were probably the only people that would go in there. And like, he'd try and explain it to me why he wasn't paying certain people and that. And I'd be like, he turned around, he's like, my friend in Morocco, in here, we don't get paid for three months. And I'm like, but that's there, this is different. Do you know what I mean? If I go to Morocco, I have to respect the culture. Do you know what I'm saying? If that's how it is. This is the culture of, this is how it is here. You need to respect that or you're going to upset certain people. And he was upsetting people, bringing in players like, players like, I don't want to say shit, but shit, guys. On better money than than players that were like there already by not just a little bit, by double, not playing them. And then it's just causing unrest because obviously people are getting wind of this. We had a boy from France on Quincy and he come in on 10 grand a week or something like that. 
Live for all of them? Yeah. Coming on 10 grand a week on loan, they paid his wages for three months, probably played six games. Coming on 10 grand a week, nice kid. I liked him, do you know what I'm saying? We had a lot of foreign boys there because obviously Abdullah was bringing in a lot of foreign boys. And like I said earlier on in, in, uh, in, in the podcast, like I always try to make effort with the, the foreign boys. So I actually got on really well with a lot of these foreign boys, do you know what I mean? But... But you're like a rep, weren't you? With all all that's coming <laughs> in. It was, What's that kick call that we were on about earlier on? David Norris on it'd be for weekend. What they call him? It'd be for weekend. Uh, what they call him? That kid. I don't know. Like, like an 1830 rep, aren't you? <laughs> no, it was. But it was. It was literally like that. Like obviously, I'd go and I'd be like, "Are you good?" Blah blah blah. But there's one boy called uh, Quincy come in, and he was on ten grand a week. Well, obviously from his parent club, but all of them were paying it. You've got players in there that are not earning that, nowhere near that. But he's doing this a lot. And then he started to, obviously, he got, like, Richie Wellings then got the job. And he just starts to interrupt with what Richie's doing and, and trying to bring in players that Richie wouldn't sign and just trying to make Richie deal with them players to where it's probably giving Richie, he's not been able to do the job that he can do because of this guy's interrupting up top. Mm. But a lot of people are like, ah, oh, they don't really... Until you're in a situation... It's like, you know, it's like, it's like a relationship where from the outside it can look okay or it doesn't really look that bad. But when you're in a relationship, you can see that it's, it, it, it's actually really bad. You know what I mean? And, and anybody that were there, the staff members that were getting turned over, good people, getting trapped like shit. Do you know what I mean? And like, what doesn't sit right with me is like, there's not many people that have come out of there and actually had the balls to say anything about it. Some people have left there and they've left it like, oh... Oh, you know what, I've got my money or whatever, I'm going to leave there. Like, I made sure, regardless of whatever happened, I was going to come out because I was a voice for the people that couldn't speak, your kit man, your, your, your office woman, and let people know that it's, it's a shit show in there mm. and they need to do something about it because it's like you being a, an older brother and leaving your siblings when you could do something about it. Speak up, man, do something. Were they not paying the staff as well? As people were not getting paid for fun. Literally for fun, they wasn't getting paid. And he was, he, he was literally started coming in the change room at half time before the game, trying to give team talks. Where the f no, no disrespect, yeah. I can understand the fan thinking that they, they know what's going on, but they don't actually know what's going on. You've never played football at any type of level. How the fuck are you going to come tell me or tell any of these how to play football? You, you, you can't no, even dream. You, 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 like, even if we're injured or not fit, you're not nowhere near the level that we've played at. Do you know what I'm saying? But you're coming in or try and tell us what to do or try and tell us this, that and the other. I remember one time you come in there and he, he tried to, to have a go at one of the boys, Oz. He tried to say that Oz had been snaking a couple of the boys. And I liked Oz, do you know what I'm saying? He's at Morecambe now, Osman Faye. And like, you just, I thought to myself, if he had been doing that, you could have done it in a different way. You're trying to hang him out to dry here, trying to make everybody turn. Did, did we speak about that? Who yeah, we? Somebody spoke we about that. We talked. It might have been Jez. So yeah, it might yeah. Jez. And I started a full-on argument with him in the change room with, with Abdullah. Start going back and forth at him. I was like, you can't fucking do this. Come out of the fucking change room, man. It's a fucking joke. And he's there, and we're having an argument. Ten minutes later. Craig, can you come up to the office? Abdullah wants to speak to you. I'm thinking, here we go. I'm going to have to get suspended, but I don't give a fuck. I'm, a, I'm 32 now. For, what, what the fuck are you going to tell me? Like, I'm not, uh, I've got a goal or whatever to the end of the season. I've, I, don't, I don't care. I'm not 21, do you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. not trying to find my way in the game, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? I've, I've been through it. I've been at a higher level. I'm not interested. Like, if you want to fuck me off, I'll go somewhere else or do whatever. I'm not bothered. Going into the office. And he's like, I sat down. I was like, what's up, man? <laughs> he's gone. You see you, Davis. This is why I like you. He's <laughs> <laughs> gone, you warrior. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, shit, I was about to think I was going to get sacked. He's <laughs> gone, you have fights. This is why I want you here. I was like, yo, I was thinking, oh, fucking, I made it worse. <laughs> man. This fucking thing actually likes me. <laughs> like, he, he, like, he, the, the weird thing is, like, he actually like used to like people that like, stand up to a degree to him. Do you know what I mean? And I is was... he is he is he an actual cunt, right? Or is he just does he just not really realise how what he's doing? Football works in, and paying people works, or is he just an absolute cunt or what? Because <sighs> obviously he does lots of cuntish things, but is he an actual like horrible bastard, or does he just think that's how it? It, it, it runs and that's just how it is. And he's dealt with things in the past. I think it's more of, you know, the geezer at Berry, for instance, 
the one that yeah, made them go yeah. cunt. Yeah. Knew would what I, he were doing. Yeah. From the start. Would I say Abdullah's like that? Honestly, hand on heart. I don't think so. If I'm being honest, I don't think. I think he's just making the wrong decisions and he's so fucking stubborn. That he sticks by them. He sticks by them. He thinks he knows more about football and what's going on than he actually does. And I, I actually think it's that. Mm. Do I think he's a... You don't think he's going out there to... Because I'm thinking to, to myself... just line his pockets and fuck yeah, the but, club. But how, but how is he lining his pockets? This is what I'm saying. The geezer at Berry was trying to line his pockets. Yeah. Was trying to literally shrink them. I don't really think he's doing that, but he's ruining the club with what he's doing, his decisions and his stubbornness. I'm not joking. I've not played now in two years, yeah? Probably two and a half stone heavier than when I played, right? I guarantee you some of them players that were getting brought in to train with us, I am better than right now. Like, no joke, I could put my boots on and I'm better than them right now. They were fucking shit. <laughs> so They were shit. I'm not joking and I'm not even being, I'm not even saying that it's, it sounds disrespectful. <laughs> I don't mean to be disrespectful. Disrespectful, but what I was put, he getting like his nephews in and stuff like that? He got his nephew in one time. What's he more? Yo, this brother coming, yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the boys were just trying to smash him because he was so far off it. I, like, I swear, damn, man thought he was Coutinho. <laughs> just come in. I'm not even joking. Like, sometimes you know yourself, right? You can tell when somebody can play or not. Like, even sometimes I've played with players before and they might be more, like, pacey players or whatever, but this geezer, I'm thinking, you're not going to be quick. You're, you don't look physical. <laughs> and what you, you can't be? really trap the fucking ball. So when it comes to the five holes, I'm like... <laughs> I, I, do you know what? I'm not, I'm not a heartless person like that yet, and I actually feel sorry for certain people. I don't like people, like, bullying. Like I said to you before, I don't like people bullying the young boys, and that it used to piss me off. To where I've even clashed with my teammates about that when they try and get onto the young boys. I don't like it, right? There's a way to speak to them and, and, and show them. But like a few of the boys are trying to smash his, his nephew or something we've seen. <laughs> and I actually felt a little bit, as much as I find it funny, because it was Abdullah's nephew or whatever, <laughs> I kind of felt a little bit sorry for him. I thought to myself, like, it's not his fault. Yeah, it wasn't nah, his it's fault. It's not your fault. No. Like, yeah. If I got given the chance to go, go and play at fucking Juve, I would, but they're going to be like, nah, this brother's miles off. <laughs> You're still going to turn up though, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, of course, that's what I'm trying to say. But then I'm going to have fucking Killini or whatever the fuck his name is trying to smash me. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he was so far off it. And I just felt like, I felt sorry for him. But the mad thing is like, like I said, hopefully at the moment, Shez is in charge and he's somebody that loves the club and, and hopefully he can turn it around. But... Obviously, we've had weeks on. Did he? Did he not ring you and say I've had Oldham interested? What do you What do you think? Weeks rang me. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Did you... rang. I told Weeks no. I told Weeks no. I told Weeks stay away from there because I, I could see and Weeks. But do you know what it is? It's one of them ones there. It's like a bird, and you're my mate, and I know that she's a, a wrong one. And I say to you, don't go there. Don't go there. Oh no, it's all right. It's all right. You go there. <laughs> what she's a wrong one. Next she's minute, fucking, next you follow you know, what? Yeah. I said to Weeks when Weeks signed, I said, listen, this is a shit show. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I've just come from Bolton where it's been a shit show. And I'm saying, listen, this is different. I'm telling you now, this is different. There's a, this, this is, this, you, you're it's not. a serious it's shit gonna, show. It's going to end up like tower for you. Do you know what I'm saying? It's sad, man, because it's such a good club as well. Like I said, I've been there twice. Like it's, it's got, like, I've got a, like a special place for it. Do you know what I mean? And, and even more so now that I know what the chairman's doing to the club, do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. And like all the people that like, he's fucked off, all the local people, they're good people, do you know what I mean? Like, well, hopefully, they stay up, the wheel. they stay yeah. up, he gets, he sells it, and they all come back. Mm. I hope so. I know we're uh, a bit pushed for time at the door. I think there's a there's a fiftieth waiting coming in this room. <laughs> 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 as long as there's no but, bounce, that I can hit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you keep, enjoying uh, retirement? Me. Yeah, do you know what? To be fair, it's crazy because I just think to myself, like, there's so much stuff that I didn't know to life that I know now. And it's sad because I feel like sometimes in football, you kind of get brainwashed that football is everything and your family or whatever little things, they're not as important. And even though you know they are as important, you kind of put them to their back burner. And I feel like it's been nice now to come out and appreciate certain things and certain people more than I ever did because probably till 
I got to a certain age, I probably didn't realize certain things and probably maybe till I met somebody like Zach Knight, for instance, that kind of- Mentor. Showed me certain things and I was like, wow, do you know what? Like you're right. And I just feel like more people that like, need to be, older players need to probably be more, not, not as selfish and help the younger boys or there need to be people in the football clubs that help the younger boys do that. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because I feel like that if there is, you know, some of the some of the players will have better careers. You know what I mean? Because I feel like it's easy to to go off the path or <clears throat> do certain things that you shouldn't be doing. Do you know what I mean? And I felt like when I got older, I probably got more pleasure in in helping the younger boys than actually playing. Do you know mm. what I mean? Do you want to do something like that? It doesn't have to be in football. Just helping younger people moving uh, forward. Do you know what? I thought. I thought. I've, I, you know, like I've, obviously, I've got a couple of badges that I need to. I've still got one or two badges that I need to do in that. But I thought about it in football, but. I think it'd have to be with as much as I'd want it to be with a, like, you know, a, like a 21s or a first team, not an under 13s, because it's a different mindset, do you know what I mean? It's a different, it's, it's, don't get me wrong, I can relate to them, but I feel like I relate and I can speak to a 21 year old, an under 21s player, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? More and, than an under 13. I, yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like you, you, you can't be asking certain things or, or saying certain things to a thirteen-year-old that you could say to like maybe a twenty-one-year-old, and mm. I feel like that's you feel more, your your experience and what you the, yeah what you've got to say. I feel like, like more influence. Yeah, on like that. at that age, like I feel like that would that would help. Like, and I still feel like I'm I'm young enough and, and relevant enough to that age group. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not fifty trying to talk to a twenty one year old and I don't know what the fuck's going on on a Saturday night. Like I still go out, do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I know what's going on, do you know what I'm saying? Like but like I feel like I can I can help them with that and I feel like some of the like like I said when I was playing, I felt like the, the ones that were like, you know, maybe 21, 22, 23, whatever, we'd still go out. I'd still go out with them every so often. Not all the time, but every so often I'd be like, yeah, you know what, the, the big man will come through and show <laughs> show you how it's done. You know what I'm saying? We'll go out sink up or drink some and have a good time but then I'd be like listen when we go back in on Monday make sure you fucking or Tuesday you make sure you graft your ass off do this do that do this do that do you know what I mean you can enjoy yourself and mm. like I said I, I just felt like you're, earlier on in my career I didn't have anybody to kind of guide me in that direction it was just kind of like freestyle because listen you know as well as I do you only listen to your family so much do you know what I mean your outside influences you listen to more and sometimes some of the people ain't always got your best interest at heart. They just want to ride on your train. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. They just want to jump on your bandwagon, your wave, your hype. As you get older, you realize certain things. And obviously, like I said, I just want to, if I ever did go into coaching, it'd be more towards the, like, maybe that, that age group that I'd think I'd work best with. So we'll see what happens. If yeah. not, I'll just uh, stuff, stick, stick yeah, well, on thank you, oh, cheers, thank you very much. Cheers, man. Enjoyed that. I've I, I just a message from my missus. She thinks I've left her. Okay. You know, how, how long have we been recording there? You have to cut that down, <laughs> You have to cut that down. Yeah, this no. first fucking six-parter.